Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. One of the features that I'm most excited about in R25 is a workflow update called Vector Import. Now, as a guy who used to work in sports, I used to spend a lot of my time rebuilding logos from Illustrator, bringing them in. You'd have to go and save it out of Illustrator as a Illustrator 8 file. Then you'd have to bring in all the splines. You'd have to add them all into extrude nerbs and sweep nerbs and recolorize everything. And it took a lot of time to set up. Well, in R25, we have this great new feature called the Vector Import, which I'm gonna go over today. You can access it right here by adding vector import and then you can load up your Illustrator file under this file path. Or what I like to do is just drag and drop your Illustrator file into Cinema 4D and we can just hit OK on this pop up. And just like that, with just one click, everything's been imported. All these splines have been added to extrude nerves and even the colors have been brought in. So you can see what a huge workflow update this is. And we also have this, um, this object up here, which is our vector import, and it's sort of like a master plugin to affect this whole setup here. So if we go to object, you can see that we have all these different options, the extrude depth, of course. The path spread is just kind of pushing all these different layers apart. If you wanna have these animate on, you can do it that way. And uh, if you go into caps, we can add a bevel to either the start or the end caps and we'll just change the size to one so we can add a nice little bevel to all of these. All right, so let's say that we wanna individually manipulate some of these splines. Right now, if you just clicked on them and moved it, it's just selecting this whole object. But if you go to object, there is a little checkbox called hierarchy. And if you click that, it's gonna actually allow you to access all of these different uh, splines here. And then what we can do is we can just click on whatever we want to extrude. We'll just click on them, we can pull them out. So you can shift click to click on multiple. Then you can just sort of start pushing and pulling these however you want them. Take this back shield and push it back. Take this uh, couple of these and push them back. And it's really easy to manipulate everything and it's basically all set up for you. So one other thing I wanted to mention is that under object, we have this sweep stroke. And this is if you have anything in Illustrator that has a stroke around it, you're gonna be able to use this. Instead of adding it to a extrude, it will add it to a sweep object. So in Illustrator, I'm going to select the outside of the shield and let's just add a stroke to this so that I can show you what it looks like. We'll just save this out. And I'm gonna to go to a new project and let's reimport that same one. Hit yes and okay. And you can see that we have this green stroke here now. And that's where all of these options under sweep stroke will show up. We have the width, so we can kick that up if we want a thicker one. And we have depth, so we can make this thicker. We can also offset that depth forward or backwards. And the really cool thing about this is that we have growth. And this is a really nice way to grow on your splines. So if we animate this, you can see that you can have all these splines growing on with your sweep. So that is if you have a stroke in Illustrator, that's going to be under the sweep stroke. Let's talk about these colors quick. If you hit render, you can see that it is rendering these colors and it'll render them in Redshift as well. Um, but these aren't actually textures on here. The way that these are being colored is make sure you're checking on hierarchy, have hierarchy checked on, and then you can go down to the individual um, extrudes and you'll see that there's no texture on them, but they're being colored under the basic, under the color here. So this is where they're deriving the color from Illustrator. You can see that all these splines are red and the upper ones were blue. So if you did want to um, play with textures and actually add your own custom textures, what you can do is make a new texture and in that texture, we'll go back to that spline and we can click lock. And then we can just uh, pick that color. And now you have a texture that you can drag on top of that extrude. And now you'll have that blue texture on there. And then you can uncheck that lock. If you do that with all of them, you'll be able to retexture all of these. And then you have all the access to, you know, adding reflection and whatnot. So that's just a little bit confusing to know where the color is coming from. It's actually not a texture. It's just under this uh, extrude color. So I hope that makes sense. This uh, vector import is gonna save tons of time. I wish this was here years and years ago, but it's here now, so we can take advantage of it and save a lot of hours setting up all these vector imports. All right, hope you guys found that useful. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.